So now that we've uh, talked about polynomials and what their behaviors are like, uh, their zeros and whatnot, uh, we're now going to talk about how to find real zeros when we're given a function. Uh, but uh, it turns out that there's a lot of groundwork that we need to do, uh, some review, uh, things related to polynomials and division, to eventually create that story on how we're going to find the zeros. So it all begins by taking a look at division. And so let's go back, uh, let's get a wait step away from polynomials for a moment, and talk about just how we divided things by hand all right, before uh, the invention of the calculators and what we did. So when we had to 126 over 11, what we typically did to start getting a decimal representation or just to uh, get any division done is we did what's called long division. And the steps were essentially we would start by asking how many times did 11 go into 1? It doesn't. How many times did 11 go into 12? What well, goes in once? We bring, uh, we multiply, and then we subtract. All right, and then we uh, do the subtraction and then just bring everything down. And so 11 into 16 goes in once, all right, minus 11, and we get 5. And then we knew we were done here because the number here is smaller than the actual, we call the divisor. And so uh, we knew we were finished. And so we, could, we had a couple of things we can do. We could tack on some decimals and go out of this decimally. Or we can stop and rewrite this as a fraction, a mixed number, 11 and in this case 5 uh, elevenths. Okay? Um, and this is actually what we want to do here because this turns into 11 plus 5 over 11. So there's the quotient is 11 with the remainder of 5 as we divided by 11. And so there was basically the, uh, the dynamics and uh, this is how we actually are going to be writing our answer when we start looking about polynomials. Our quotient plus my remainder over what I divided by in the first place. So that's kind of the, the thrust of this. Uh, now when we start dividing polynomials, the thing is going to be the same, but since we're not dealing with numbers, we're going to be going term by term. So looking at this first one, um, looking at it long division wise, I would start off like this. Okay, so uh, uh, my numerator goes underneath this and the denominator goes outside of here. And we just start asking ourselves, right, how many times does 3x go into 6x squared? Well, that's 2x. We multiply. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. And we subtract and we're left with 0. And then we just bring everything down. How many times does 3 go into 4x? Well, it doesn't go in cleanly. The x's cancel out and we're left with 4 thirds. Multiplying, we have 4x. Subtracting, we have a 3. And then at this stage, we know we're done because this is degree 1, and this doesn't have an x, so we're finished. So this is your remainder. So our answer here is our quotient is 2x plus 4 thirds plus my remainder over what I divided by. Of course, we can actually simplify this a little bit more, uh, cancel out the 3s. But I'm going to just stop there because that kind of demonstrates what we want to do. So our quotient plus our remainder over what I divided by in the first place. That's pretty much what our uh, um, rhythm will be. Uh, getting a little harder, this was kind of nice because we at least were dividing by a tr uh, monomial. What happens when we divide by a binomial? Well, same thing. Our denominator goes out here. Our numerator goes inside the long division sign. And then what we start asking ourselves again is first term into first term. So what, you know, how many times does x go into 3x squared? Well, that's 3x times. Multiplying, 3x times x is 3x squared. Negative 2 times 3x is a negative 6x. And then we're going to be subtracting, right? Every time we're finished with the multiplication, we subtract. And I like to use a different sign or a different uh, thing here because when I do a subtraction, what I do is I end up changing signs. All right, so when we when we subtract a polynomial, we distribute it and change signs. So that's zero, and then here negative x plus six x is five x and plus five, and then we just start it all over again. So how many times does the first term x go into the first term five x? Well, that's five times. Multiply five times x is five x minus two times uh, five is negative ten. We're subtracting, so we change the signs. So again, I like to use a different color to show that. 
uh, the five x's go away and we're left with five plus ten is fifteen. At this stage the degree here is one and the degree here is zero so we're done. That's our remainder. So our answer is our quotient three x plus five plus our remainder over what we divided by in the first place. Okay, so there's your long division process for polynomials. Let's do it one more time and then I'm going to show you a trick. So here uh, we've got x plus 3 and then we got to be careful because we go from a degree 3 term to degree 0 term. So that just means that the two terms of degree 2 and 1 their coefficient is zero, so they, they kind of serve as place values, if you would. And so we just start going through first term into first term, right? What do I, you know, how many times does x go into x cubed? Well, x squared times. Multiplying x squared times x is x cubed. 3 times x squared is a positive 3x squared. We subtract, so when I subtract, I'm changing signs. And so when I do that, we end up with a negative 3x squared plus 0x plus 27, and then we get to do it again. So how many times does x go into negative 3x squared? Well, negative 3x times. Negative 3x times x is a negative 3x squared. Positive 3 times a negative 3x is a negative 9x. Again, because we're subtracting, I'll change the signs, and we end up with 9x plus 27. How many times does x go into 9x? Well, 9 times. 9 times x is 9x, 9 times 3 is 27. We change signs because I was subtracting, and we end up with 0. So this case, the remainder, there is no remainder, and we end up with the answer of x squared minus 3x plus 9. And I'll, have, I'll say more about that in a moment. But, um, uh, but what we do have is, our, if you wanted to, you know, plus 0 plus x plus 3. But anything time, you know, divided into zero is just zero. So we're all quotient here. So there's the long division process. Of course, this is long. It's a little confusing. And somebody invented synthetic division. I don't know who the mathematician was that came up with this idea, but it's really cool. So let me show it to you. We're going to use it a lot. You're going to get pretty good at it. But the first thing, this idea of synthetic division only replaces the long division on the condition that we're dividing by something of the form x minus c. Now that's good news for us because in the last module we learned that x minus c is a linear factor if we have some zeros and all that other good stuff. So you can kind of hopefully see that you know we're, we're tying something together to uh, another uh, process. Um, and what we end up doing with synthetic division is first we have to show that I can use synthetic division. So it couldn't be used here because I don't have x minus c. Right here, right, x minus 2 tells us that c is equal to 2. And then over on this one, we have x plus 3, but that's x minus a negative 3, so our c is negative 3. So this one and this one are candidates for synthetic division. And the way we do synthetic division, let me do this one first, is we... Uh, there's a lot of different ways on how we set this up, but to perform this division, 3x squared minus x plus 5 all over x minus 2, in a little box we put our c value. So in this case our c is 2, and then outside the box we basically list all our coefficients. So 3, negative 1, and 5. And then the synthetic division process starts by just dropping this down, so 3. If we're below the uh, line we're multiplying. So 2 times 3 is 6 and we bring that up here. If we're above the line we're adding. So minus 1 plus 6 is 5. If we're below the line we're multiplying giving us a 10. If I'm above the line I'm adding. And we're finished there and here's what ends up happening. This is basically your remainder and because we took a degree 2 polynomial and divided it by a degree 1 polynomial this is basically your quotient in degree 1. So our answer is 3x plus 5 is our quotient plus our remainder over what we divided by in the first place. And if you look, that matches my answer right there. Very amazing. And if you kind of look, I'm trying to change colors here, this operation and this operation occur right here and right there. So somewhere, somehow, someone realized that you can collapse this, all this work 
It basically comes down to the coefficient work in our process. Amazing, right? Because all that work turns into that process. So let's do it again for the other one. Um, so for x cubed plus 27 over x plus 3, right? Uh, we going through our little song and dance here since our it has to be the form x minus c. I'm going to rewrite that positive as a minus negative 3. So that tells me that my c is a negative 3, so we write that in a little box. Our coefficients, well, we have 1, 0, 0, and 27, right? The coefficient of x cubed, the coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x, and the coefficient of 27. If we're above the line, we just drop it down. If we're, uh, um, or we add. Uh, if we're below the line, we multiply. So negative 3 times 1 is a negative 3 add. Negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Add. Negative 3 and 9 gives us a negative 27. Add. And so there's our remainder again. And because I took a degree 3 and divided it by a degree 1, what you're doing, looking at here is your quadratic. So we have x squared minus 3x plus 9 plus 0 over x plus 3, right? And which is 0 anyways. Which does in fact match, right, the quotient that we got when we did it long division wise. So obviously this is going to take some practice. Um, it also gives you an idea where this is heading because notice if the remainder is zero, I have started to factor the polynomial. And if the remainder is zero, that also means we have a zero of the function. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but uh, believe it or not, we're going to find zeros. This is our goal, right? We're going to find zeros of polynomials by doing a whole bunch of synthetic division. But uh, let me go ahead and fill in the process. But for now, let's go practice our synthetic division since we know we're going to be using it quite frequently. We'll do that in a new video coming soon. See you guys then.